we are going to start by removing this Kapton tape. I did not put this here. It was already on the phone. I assume that they put this on it in the factory, and I'm not sure why, but uh, obviously we need to go ahead and peel this off so that we can have access to the anchors over here. So we'll put some flux on all four of these spots. And what I noticed about this model is that it was particularly easy to remove the solder, unlike uh, some other brands. Usually if you're working with something like Samsung or Motorola, they typically have a pretty high melting point on the existing solder. So I am adding some leaded solder here. I'd be curious to see how this would go without this step, but normally we always want to add some leaded solder to make it easier to get the existing stuff out. And you'll see here that it is pretty cooperative, you know, pr pretty much on the first try. Now, I was having a little bit of a problem here because it's difficult to get a board holder that is designed for this particular shape. It's pretty awkward, so there are some different solutions out there. And really, I, I like board holders that are made for specific models, and obviously we didn't have that option here. So go ahead and flip it over after we've evacuated the solder out of the anchor holes. And again, adding some flux right here to where the contact pins are, and then we'll flow some leaded solder down here to saturate this. And the main concern here, of course, is pulling pads, which again, I don't think is really a, gonna be a problem on this model because it comes off so easily. And some people skip this step entirely, you know, and just go ahead and use hot air to remove the port. I prefer to flow the leaded solder into it because we know we're gonna have that lower melting temperature and makes everything nice and easy to remove. And don't worry about that excess solder over there on the side. We will clean that up later. But I am going to Kapton over the microphone. And this is one of the things about this particular model is that the mic is right next to the port. So we don't want that floating off. I'm even going to add a shield right over the top of that mic to kind of deflect some of the heat. But of course, if it does get too hot and starts floating around, we have the Kapton to hold it in place so it doesn't move anywhere, hopefully. Now from here, I'm gonna get my tweezers ready and hit this with hot air. And you'll see here, it doesn't take a whole lot really to heat this thing up and get it off, especially now that we've got most of the solder removed. And of course, we've got the leaded solder in there to make it easier to melt. Now we wanna be careful not to use any force here. I'm just holding on to the port until I can feel it kind of move around on its own. And at that point, we'll go ahead and lift it out of the board. In this situation, the legs are nice and straight, so you don't have to worry about it getting hung up on the inside there, which we see sometimes when we're working with PS4 HDMI ports. Even though the solder's melted, the legs are a little bent, so you have to apply a small amount of force. But you see this one just lifted off nicely, and from here we'll get rid of the shield. And we'll go ahead and add some flux so that we can further evacuate the solder from these anchor holes. We want these to be nice and clear so that our new port will set down in there and be flush with the board. So again, you can see the board is flexing a bit as I put my soldering iron on top of it. I'm actually holding it with one hand, but uh, the, the solder for the most part comes out pretty easily. There's a little residual left down there, but we'll come back and hit that later. I'm just gonna go and get the majority of it out right now. And as you can see, for the most part, it came out pretty clean at this stage. Now, if your wick gets stuck, and it did here, and I wanted to leave this in to just kind of show you, the easiest way to deal with this is to not pull on it. You don't want to damage anything or yank it off in pieces, but just add some flux on top of it. And what has happened is once the flux boils away, of course, things start sticking to each other. And that's a, a good sign that it is time to add some more flux. And you can see that helps to get this thing off a lot easier because the heat is able to transfer a lot more easily when we don't have that layer of oxidation between two surfaces. Now from here, I'm just gonna go along and clean off all of the old solder here and some of that extra stuff that I splashed over to the side. And we'll get some rubbing alcohol and clean this up so we can get a better look at what's going on and remove some of that burnt flux. All right, so we'll get some fresh flux on here and take one more stab at these two holes. For some reason, 
they do not heat up as easily and we want to make sure we get all that old solder out. So I'm flowing some more lead down inside here just to make things easier. And those the ground pins on the very top there, those tend to absorb the heat pretty easily, so sometimes you've got to go back over them and get them nice and hot so that the solder comes off. As you can see now we've got this thing at the point where it is going to be very easy to place the new port inside and have it sit down flush on the board. So I'm going to make one more swipe here with the alcohol, get everything nice and clean. And one more time with a bit of fresh flux so that we can tin these pads. And this is a tough part to explain. You've got to have these things hold enough solder on them that We'll have something to attach to. You've got to get a sufficient melting point so that the solder flows nicely. And of course the flux is going to help to make that happen. We don't want to get too much, but we don't want to get too little either. Now the main thing, oops, I grabbed the wrong port there. That is actually the old port and you can see why this thing needed to be replaced. This is pretty dirty, probably got some moisture inside there and that would explain why we're not able to charge the phone anymore. So let's make sure we have the right port. Here's our new one. And this should go ahead and sit down somewhat flush on the board. Now obviously it's going to stick up just a tiny bit because of the solder underneath the pins, but I'm going to put a very slight downwards pressure on this while I heat them so that that way they'll kind of sink down into position. And that's the nice thing about micro USB ports. It's pretty easy on this step to just hold on to it with your tweezers and go in here because we've got so much clearance and we'll just heat this thing up until everything sinks down. Now of course you can do this with hot air also. It is all up to you and everyone has their own preference, but I prefer to do this one by hand just mainly because I can. And we can always go hit it with hot air afterwards if you want everything to look nice and pretty and flow together, but mainly we want to make sure that the solder gets attached and fully connected to all of these pins. They are not going to be subjected to much wear and tear. That's what the anchors are for, but we don't want them losing contact. Now I flipped the board over here and if you take a look, you can actually see where the legs from the port are coming through these holes and they don't come all the way through the board they come pretty close right about the middle and what we want to do is get enough solder down here so that it fills the hole we don't want to overdo it but we do want it to flow out through the opposite side that way we know that it is fully connected to all of those anchoring legs you can see it doesn't take much you don't really want a big mound here you want just kind of a slight dimple on this side like they were when they came from the factory. And if we go ahead and flip it over here, give me a second to reposition this. And you can see that it is melted through nicely. It's gone all the way through the holes and attached to the legs. So we've got a good solid connection. And those anchor points, those are what are gonna keep this thing from breaking when people start wiggling their charging port around. And if anything, I would rather that the data connections and the charging connections on the board crack and come off rather than pulling the pads that are underneath them. That's why I don't think we really have to worry about putting lots of solder on these. We just want to make sure that they're attached securely, but again, the anchors on this thing are what is going to be making it um, durable for the most part. Now we'll go through here with the multimeter, make sure we haven't bridged any connections. Of course, the grounding pin on the right hand side is going to beep when you touch the port. And I want to say that those two on the right were actually connected, but you should be able to visually inspect this and make sure that everything looks clean. And here I'm just going to take my braid now that I have it out in a bit of flux and just clean this up. Now the fact that that silver isn't going to hurt anything, we just don't want any big pieces of solder, you know, anything that could break off and float around in the phone going on there. Next we've got a toothbrush with some rubbing alcohol. We're going to clean this up really nicely front and back and on the inside of the port. We don't want any flux stuck on the inside of the micro USB connector. That could obviously lead to some problems later on. But for the most part, we are just about finished here. I'll flip it over and clean the other side. Now 
I am using a 99% rubbing alcohol, so this will dry up pretty fast. We want to make sure that it's completely dry before we reassemble the phone and plug any connectors in, because that obviously could trap the alcohol on the inside. And after that, we're going to put it on the bench, plug it in, and if you take a look closely here up in the corner, let's turn the screen on, we have a chargeable phone. If you found the video helpful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out our weekly Tech Talk live stream. Have a great one and thanks for watching.